Good morning, I'm Donna Rosenberg from Jameson Legal and I am Director and Head of In-House for UK and Europe. Today we're doing a virtual interview on this, on, and it's a series of interviews on the topic of the rise of the modern GC. This series of interviews is talking to senior lawyers in management, strategic and or executive positions on topics such as careers, careers in-house, technology and changes within the legal industry, aimed at providing content and information to lawyers looking to transition or already in-house. I'm here today with John Fitzpatrick. John was most recently Senior Vice President and General Counsel at F-Star Therapeutics, a NASDAQ-listed biotech company. How are you today, John? Very good, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what triggered your move in-house? Well, I started my career at Gibson, Dun & Crutcher, a large international law firm in Paris. And while I was there, I was seconded to Slumberger HQ in Montrouge, and I was responsible as in-house counsel for their electronic, tra electronic transactions division, which is about a 1 billion USD business unit. Um, and it was quite a challenging and interesting experience that both um, made me interested in being in-house and also in the technology space in particular. I then uh, moved to a, a specialized uh, technology law firm in Boston, focused on advising biotech and infotech type companies, and then moved in-house to uh, one of the largest technology companies in the Boston area, uh, which was an excellent experience, spent several years there and had excellent training because the um, in-house counsel that I worked with, the general counsel, et cetera, were quite senior and experienced. And so it was a very good experience, but I decided to go back as outside counsel in Europe. And eventually I became a partner at CMS Cameron McKenna and was a partner there for 10 plus years. Um, CMS is one of the largest firms in the UK and in Europe and globally really. And um, I worked there primarily in the tech and biotech sectors. I then decided to move back in house and I went to a global specialized uh, private investigation firm called Mondello and Co. And there I was EMEA general counsel where I focused on compliance matters in particular, which is increasingly important for general counsels generally, and also data protection, which obviously is very important for a private investigation firm, and now for virtually all companies that are uh, doing business with Europe. Um, I, I headed up their GDPR compliance program in particular. Uh, I then went back, um, I then joined to an uh, FSA Therapeutics in Cambridge, UK as SVP and general counsel where I was responsible for um, taking the company, if you will, public. It was a private company at the time, VC-backed. Uh, we did a major reorganization and then set the company up to be ready to be listed. We then decided to do a very complex um, Fallen Angel reverse merger transaction, which was one of the first, if not the first, of its kind in the UK. And we reverse merged into a US listed biotech and effectively took it over. Star is now a listed biotech um, NASDAQ company, as, um, as you would typically see cross border. The unique thing is it was done through a reverse merger and quite complex. Excellent experience um, all around. My experience at F Star working with the people was great. And I hope to do something similar in the future with with a similar type of technology, biotechnology company. All right, thank you for that, John. And moving on to the questions, uh, before we get started, we want this to be uh, as interactive as, pos uh, as uh, possible. So if anybody has any questions for either myself or you, John, they can reach out to me at donna.rosenberg at jamesonlegal.com. So please don't hesitate to leave a comment about the, the, the video or reach out to me about any further information that you would like to be seen discussed in these interviews. Um, moving on to our first question, John, uh, do you foresee any significant changes to the legal industry in the future, which may also impact in-house? 
Well, yes, I think it's been going on for several years now, probably a decade or more, where um, the relationship between inside and outside counsel is is changing materially. I think the 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 main factors that impact that are how services are provided by law firms or alternate service providers, and there are many now, and how the what the best mix of services that in-house counsel can use and have recourse to that may be through a traditional law firm, that may be through an alternate service provider, but I think that is probably the biggest change that we've seen. And I think also coming on as a big change is, is uh, legal tech and the impact of, on legal tech on the future provision of services. In short, I tend to look at um, how you approach outsourcing legal services through a matrix. And um, I put matters into various categories. And in the high risk, high complexity category, generally you're gonna outsource that to a specialized law firm. That's mm -hmm. a typical way it works and probably that will continue. I think there are three other areas where it's not so clear how you source legal services and how law firms respond and all legal services respond to provide services in these other quadrants of the matrix. Second matrix is um, segment of the matrix is high risk, low complexity work. And I think oftentimes we just do that in house. We and we're able to do that work because it doesn't require particularly high level specialized skills, but at the same time, it's quite important. So general counsel or one of the other counsels in the firm will spend time on that type of work. However, that work also could be outsourced to specialized service providers or law firms as well, but you need to sort of come up with a rationale on how to do that. Then the next quadrant is low risk and high complexity. And I think that is an area where um, you want to outsource. It's particularly good to outsource. I think it's a great place for alternate service providers or law firms to be in and provide services. Um, and the last quadrant is low risk, low complexity. I think typically we would try to outsource that. You think of corporate maintenance, for example. No need to have your in-house lawyer spending time doing corporate maintenance. And also, in addition to outsourcing, this is an area where we're seeing automation. So you particularly automate those repetitive tasks that don't really require the skills or the time of an in-house lawyer or outside counsel. Mm -hmm. So I think um, however you source this legal work, um, you need to establish that mix and how you're going to how you're going to serve it. I'm relationship driven, and so I think if a law firm can provide all of those services, I'm happy to do it that way. But I think because of the demands of cost containment and um, quality of service, law firms and the alternate service providers need to find a way to address those various needs of in-house counsel. Thank you. And I think this, uh, those um, points that you've made probably lead into the next two questions. Um, so just on the technology front, do you see technology changing in-house legal teams? Yes, I do. And it's becoming increasingly important, increasingly useful. So on the legal tech side, there are a range of matters that come up from contract management to automated signature solutions, board company secretarial software, online legal, legal resources and precedents such as PLC, and um, now AI-enabled um, automation of legal work, which is quite interesting. Um, I'm currently working on a project to, um, to an, um, implement an integrated document management and AI-enabled contract automation software. And it's very interesting how the technology has developed. It's quite good now. And I think, you know, years ago, people talked about legal tech and automation. I think now it is real. It's possible and you can do it and you can do it effectively. And in fact, you need to do it because really you want your contract management, your signature software, your board management software, your um, and your automation to integrate reasonably well. And now that's possible. And how does that um, sort of feed into the changes that you may see happening regarding appointing and working with external legal firms? Well, I think both the, both of these last two questions are very relevant. And then um, 
you know, counsel has to understand outside counsel, all the legal service providers have to understand that matrix that I talked about, and they can't treat all matters as the same. And if they do, they will, it, you know, the, the general counsel will have to find alternate providers. I think being flexible and having an approach that, and I've seen law firms that are able to do that, you know, they, they don't um, treat all matters the same. And, you know, you can't do hourly billing for, you know, low risk, low complexity matters. It just doesn't really work. And I think that law firms need to figure out how, how, how to address that. Having been a partner in a law firm for many, many years, I know the demands and how you need in order to service your clients to be flexible. Again, I still think that relationship-driven arrangements are the best. And if you can find a good provider um, who can provide you a range of services, it's always easier and you, you work it out. Thank you, John. And, you know, pandemic has been a topic of the conversation for quite some time and it will continue to be so for years to come, I'm sure. But in terms of working arrangements, what positive impact has the pandemic had, had on flexible remote working? Well, I think it's very clear that remote working is very much viable and it's been proven to be viable. So I don't think it's going away as everyone talks about. Having said that, though, I think um, it's very hard for remote working to replace your ability to develop relationships with people, which in my view is a critical element of being a general counsel or being an in-house counsel, period, is you need to be able to develop um, relationships with your, your internal clients. And that you can try to do it online, but it's just not the same. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that um, you will see a move back towards people getting involved in um, physical working when it's possible. And in part, you know, for the lawyers in particular, in, in order to be able to provide um, that opportunity to build the relationships that are so key to being a good in-house counsel. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um... Just, just moving on to a completely different topic uh, at the moment in, in respect to recruitment um, and your experiences of working with recruitment companies in, in the past and or in the future. How important has it been with uh, respect to partnering with a specialist recruitment company, not only to your own career, but also to help you build your teams um, in-house? I have always had a very strong relationship Ship driven arrangement with recruiters. I mean, I think it's essential. Um, some people don't, but I, I disagree. I think absolutely that you need to have good relationships with recruiters. And when I refer to recruiters, I mean professionals who genuinely attempt to match a client's need with the right person, who do detailed evaluations of candidates before they close them, who um, really recruit candidates and help you through the whole process of recruiting somebody because recruiting is one of the most important things you do as 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 your um, as a senior general counsel or a senior lawyer in-house and the extent that a recruiter can assist you with to, you know finding candidates to closing the transaction because i've often found that you know the most the best candidates are the most difficult and the best recruiters are able to help you from the very beginning to finding that candidate all the way to convincing that candidate to join the, mm -hmm. the company that you're at and so i think recruiting relationships ton of time recruiting and being able to outsource that like anything else to a good recruiter is absolutely essential to building an in-house legal team I think one of the reasons it's so important is because unlike in a law firm, you don't have in house an HR department that's used to recruiting lawyers, particularly. And I think that there is a difference in, in recruiters who know how to recruit lawyers and find good lawyers. It matters. And so having that outside resource who is able to assist you is, is critical. And the last thing I would say is, as with law firms, um, I think the best approach is to develop a very strong relationship with your recruiters. It should be relationship driven. I'm not a fan of commoditizing either legal services or many services, including recruiting. 
think it's essential that you trust your recruiter. You build a relationship with them. It's a symbiotic relationship so that you treat each other quite well, either way you go and however things transpire. Sorry, I missed that. No, I was yeah. just saying it's, it's that relationship is essential, I think, in all of the things that you, all of the providers that you have, whether it's your outside counsel or your recruiter. But I think in, with outside counsel and, and recruiters, it's quite important because it's probably the two most important things you do, provide legal services and, and also find talent. Thank you. And I know we've talked about a lot of things since we've connected just in general and uh, particularly about the topic of the rise of the modern GC. What appealed to you about the, the topic in itself and, and to participate today? Well, I think it's quite interesting. I think what you're doing is quite good because I think it's good for people to hear people's perspectives. And the GC world has changed massively over the last 20 or 30 years from being a kind of sleepy job in some ways in many respects to being a highly demanding highly specialized um, skill set and so one of the reasons that i like being in-house is the range of work you get involved in in a law firm you tend to get very focused on a very specific matter and i think people who who are in the general counsel world need to go in in-house world need to go across a have the ability to go across a range of issues to deliver services and i think with the changes in the legal industry and technology the in-house role has changed massively and it is very very exciting now to be associated with um, the in-house developing in-house legal teams um, building re building in-house departments and um and delivering the services that the companies like the companies i have worked for needed it's quite quite challenging and quite interesting. Thank you. Thanks very much for joining us today, John, and thank you for um, everything that you've put together in respect to the information you've provided to the questions we've asked. If I may just provide a bit more information in closing about Jameson Legal, we're an international recruitment company and we are specialists in legal, legal and compliance roles. We have offices in London, Abu Dhabi, Hong Kong and Singapore, and we recruit legal company secretary risk and compliance positions for law firms, professional services, industry and commerce. As I mentioned before, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at my email address if you have a question for either John or myself. And um, in the, the post to this video, uh, you'll also find a link to our LinkedIn group called The Rise of the Modern GC, which has been set up as an ongoing forum for continued conversation where you can ask questions and get support. Is there anything else uh, you wanted to add today, John? No, thank you. Happy to participate and happy to respond to any questions if they come up. Yeah, it's been great to meet you as well, and I look forward to staying in touch. And in the meantime, stay safe and keep well. The same. Thank you. Thanks, John. Bye bye.